Dodgeville, Wisconsin, population 4,220. It was founded in 1827 by Henry Dodge and today is the Mercantile Center of Iowa County. Dodgeville is also the home to corporate headquarters of Land's End and the county seat of Iowa County with the oldest active courthouse in Wisconsin. So what could be missing from this small Midwestern town? Maybe a discount superstore? But wait, they already had a Walmart. Why would they need a supersized one? Dodgeville residents have seen businesses come and go, but with the new addition of the Super Walmart, where would this leave the local businesses? Some that have been here for over 100 years. I will analyze the effect of Super Walmart on small town businesses and cities, concentrating on the newly supersized Dodgeville. As of a 2000 census, there were 4,220 people residing in Dodgeville. 98.06% of them were Caucasian. The median income for a household was $41,615. Males had a median income of $32,738 versus $24,047 for females. The per capita income for the city was $20,962. 5.3% of the population were below the poverty line. 67% of housing in Dodgeville is owner occupied. Compared to the rest of the state, Dodgeville is in the top 18% for having the highest median family income and low rate of poverty. The unemployment rate is at a 40 year low. Dodgeville is also the business center of Iowa County, benefiting from an economy that blends industry agriculture, and tourism. Dodgeville is home to the corporate headquarters of Land's End, a global catalog and internet merchandise of apparel and home products. This corporation employs much of the city. Main Street USA is the central business district of Dodgeville. There are 11 historic buildings that still stand today. And of average, an age of a business in Dodgeville is 33 years old. The University of Wisconsin conducted a labor condition study in Iowa County, and as of 1999, 76% of businesses are locally owned, and only 6% are franchised. If anything, the report showed that the labor market in Iowa County is relatively tight. Two-thirds of employers report that they face difficulties in trying to hire. Walmart has been around for well over 20 years, so what makes it have such a strong following? What makes Walmart a super discount store? The U.S. has become unable to produce enough physical goods to satisfy our own existence. We suck in imported goods from around the world. What Walmart's lure is, of course, is lower prices. Walmart buys offshore without apology for the cheapest possible prices for companies paying the lowest possible wages. Jobs in America are lost to foreign sweatshops that make Walmart products, but the biggest destruction that has come out of the hand of Walmart is the destruction of small businesses that are dominated by Walmart's cheap products. Walmart has climbed its way to becoming the world's largest corporation with sales around $344 billion. Walmart claims to help small towns and businesses. One of their claims is that they kickstart local economies. One could understand this if it were the only Super Walmart in the area, but Dodgeville was only 37 miles away from Super Walmart Sam's Club in Madison, 20 miles away from Platteville, and near a Super Walmart in Richland Center and Prairie du Chien. I interviewed several business owners in Dodgeville, and one who wished to remain anonymous stated that they are not getting more business, more like less business. Why would Walmart shoppers looking for gifts come here when they can just get cheap knockoffs there? If you want something cheap, you know, fine, go there. If it's a, uh, a budget matter and Walmart's in your budget, then I guess you have to go there. But I, I'm not going to get caught in the trap of selling a cheap product like Walmart does. As an article by Richard Freeman stated, where Walmart strides, whole communities collapse. Many businesses have had to make changes in order to keep up with a supersized Walmart. Okay, what is your name and 
your business name? My name is Courtney, and I'm a cosmetologist at Jan's Hair Designs. Okay, and so you know that the Reese's Super Walmart has come up here in Dodgeville has a cost cutters in it, which is a chain store. How does this opening of the store affected your business? It hasn't really affected our business at all. Um, cost cutters is more of a walk in based salon where we actually have appointments set where. It's convenient, I guess, for those last minute people in Dodgeville to get in on Saturday afternoons and Sundays when we're closed, but it really hasn't affected us at all. Do you think Dodgeville being like a hometown feel um, like the idea of a Super Walmart coming in? or I think it was 50-50. Um, half of them disliked the idea and half of them liked the idea of doing their one-stop shop. Oh, my name is Brian Kruba. Uh, I own a quality bakery in Dodgeville, Wisconsin. Um, originated back in 1928. We're a third generation bakery. We're actually working on our fourth. My nephew works for me, so he's fourth generation. Well, basically a retail bakery do some wholesale. I'm not a lot, basically retail. Um, that's about all I know. <laughs> I don't like to try to be compete with the big super source. I do my own little thing and uh, in order to compete with them it's just crazy. So I, I uh, basically haven't changed anything. My name is Bill Wall. My wife and I, and I own a family business. It's been around since 1927. We have uh, men's and ladies clothing from dress to casual. We screen print. We are a dry cleaning pickup and Drop off points. With every opening of a Super Walmart, they make charitable givings in the thousands. With the opening of the Dodgeville Super Walmart, $15,000 in total was given to the Dodgeville Revitalization Program, Iowa County Fair Society, and Upland Hills Health. This may seem like a large amount of money, but compared to their profits, it's a drop in the bucket. As Brian Kruba, owner of the Quality Bakery, stated, we are small businesses. We give year round, and their number doesn't even compare to the amount of money we give to the community. Oh, uh, community. Well, there's chamber commerce. There's we give free buns to funerals. For the churches, Cub Scouts, Girl Scouts, anything they do, we do. We donate for them. We donate just about everything. Gift certificates. Do you give discounts to school events and whatnot? Yes. They got school function. Normally we'll donate it, but uh, otherwise it's cut rate. Walmart dictates through its demand for low prices that its suppliers outsource their production to foreign nations further ripping down America's battered domestic manufacturing and agriculture capability. The money made in Walmart does not stay in the local economy. Local businesses rely on each other, buying from one another, like a pillar of support. Walmart does not help the stability of any town. Walmart's outsourcing caused a loss of 1 to 1.5 million manufacturing production jobs. But what makes local better? For this, we asked the local businesses. Personal service. Um, I think uh, the knowledge of my products uh, can help them out in that way. It's just more personal service than anything else. Really. Service. We care about people when we have a customer come into the store, we try to retain them. Well, there was a Walmart and there is a Walmart now, so it's a big super slab. Um, you'll get your people who will go out and try it and find out that it's a bunch of crap just like everything else. So. Buying from local businesses may seem more expensive, but really it's not and all the money stays right here in the economy. We live in a nation in which the real dollar income of an average family has declined for many years. 
while corporate profits have skyrocketed. The gap between the poor and the rich has widened. The bottom line is, until Americans can make a decent amount of money, they'll have to succumb to Walmart's low prices. Where does that leave the local businesses? Only time will tell. <laughs> What's everybody doing?